So first of all, good morning. I hope you are having a nice experience so far on OpenFest 2016. Today, in the music, music hall, we are going to talk about, you guessed it, music. So uh, today, we're having a presentation, an actual talk and presentation of the Vult programming language, which uh, is used to code uh, digital signal processing algorithms, either to be played in the browser or to be exported uh, for microcontrollers. And the talk is going to be given by the creator of the language, uh, the man himself. I want you to give it up. Give some applause for Leonardo Laguna Rui. <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> so, I'm glad you're here. And first I want to make a disclaimer that if you had like a rough night yesterday, your ears may be a little bit delicate, and I'm gonna make some noise here. So if, if, if you have problems, it's perfectly fine. If you have to, you can just fold a napkin and put it in your, in your ears, it's, it's fine. I'm not gonna get offended or anything. So I'm gonna talk to you about this project that I, that I have been developing for, for a few years, and, and it's, it's a, it's a programming language, which uh, this, this will be the more technical definition of it. That is, it's a domain-specific language to simplify coding of digital signal processing algorithms. And if you are not used to these terms, I can give you a quick explanation. Like, a digital, uh, digital signal processing is basically taking any, any analog signal, converting it to a digital domain, and then use a computer to modify it and then later you can convert it back to analog and, and get, it, get it back. So uh, nowadays it's, it's hard to escape from this, from this uh, concept because everything that we do in our smartphone is digital signal processing, right? You take a picture, you are digitizing, then you're, you can transform it and then paste it on Instagram or stuff like that, right? The, in my specific case, it's going to be audio. And what is a domain-specific language, you, you may ask? The best example will be something like HTML. HTML is a, is a domain-specific language which helps you coding web pages. Uh, on the contrary side, you have like, the general purpose languages, which will be, for example, C++ or Python. So C++ or Python or many others uh, allow you to do many more things. But it's, it will be much harder to, to code a, a web page completely in, in C++. So HTML is simpler. And the purpose behind Boot is I want it to be like the HTML of sound. So it will be very easy to do uh, stuff like this. Th these are the main applications that I've been exploring, which is audio effects, synthesizers, or embedded systems. But Boot is also good. For any, for any application which requires numerics. If you need to, to crunch numbers, it's, it's, it's going to be good for that. So just to give you a, a quick overview on, on the kind of things that you can do with Vult, I'm going to show you these this, this clips. So I recorded this uh, in Hack Cafe, plugged it, and I would just connect it and let the people play, play with it. So all, all the sounds that you're hearing are actually generated with full code that is in some cases running on the browser or, or running on pure data. And in that video I'm, I'm using this controller that, that I have here which just sends uh, MIDI signals. And then those MIDI signals are taken, processed, and the sound is generated. So. And if you were paying attention, uh, in the video, uh, there was this uh, web interface, which is the one of the tools in Vult, which is the, the Vult Playground, uh, which was developed with the idea of, of getting Getting the make it an, an experimentation platform for for the language itself, 
and then and you can run it completely on the browser, or and then you can take the code and, and send it to other places. And I'm, I'm going to give you a, an example of using the the playground. But first, I, I want to tell you what I'm going to do first. So I'm going to I'm going to try to create some sounds which are based. Uh, I'm going to create some saw waves, and the way of implementing a saw wave in a in digital is is like making a counter. So the saw wave looks like this. It reaches one point and then goes goes to zero. And in, if I do a counter, if if I do a zoom to the wave, I will get. Uh, I I I could see that these are small steps. So the faster the counter it is. The, the higher the, f the higher the frequency is going to be, and the and the slower the counter, we're going to perceive it uh, as a slower frequency. So this is the web interface of Pult, and I have some some code that I have already typed. And but my main function is going to be this this processing function. What I'm going to do is I'm going I I want to create that counter, so I can start typing. Um, I'm gonna call it face or I need to check not to make mistakes. I'm gonna give it a a value, a pitch value. And if if, if you pay attention, uh, the web interface is, is gonna be highlighting all the errors uh, that, that you will make. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a counter. To create a counter I need some kind of memory. And I'm gonna I'm gonna call it face, and the value of the face is gonna be the previous value of the face. The face. Plus, I'm gonna use a build uh, a function that I have here, that is is to calculate based on on a pitch number. Uh, it's gonna give me how how much the counter needs needs to increment. I'm gonna call it rate. And I want to reset the counter, and for that I'm going to use the the modulus operation. And that's it. I have a counter, and I'm going to return the value. So in order to to listen to this sound, I'm going to uh, assign it to a to a variable. I'm going to call it O1. It's going to be the fa face or of the pitch. I'm going to put a pitch value which is reasonable. And I'm going to return this. And now let's see how it sounds. If I want to make some change to it, I can just uh, change this number, get it higher, lower. But since I I also have this keyboard here, and we we are gonna take that value and just put it as as the pitch. Mm. So I'm gonna declare a mem memory variable here. Either this, the keyboard here, or, or connect any external, an external keyboard that sends me the signals, and, and the web browser is gonna is gonna open the ports, and you can start playing with it. So up to here, nothing nothing special in the language, but when, when it gets very handy, it's like I have created this this small function that has memory. It's a counter internally, and if I want to to create more more of them, uh, I can just copy this line of code. I'm gonna call it pitch plus. Let's go uh, no, twelve. I'm gonna call it O2, and I'm gonna add the two values. 
if I play this now I'm getting two waveforms maybe you cannot hear the difference so let's take one of the controls that I have here and add it instead And now we can use the, the control to, to change the tuning directly. It sounds kind of ugly, but let's try to make it better. And, and if I need more, I can just add one extra here. So, and, and if you if you are used to, to other kind of languages, uh, like C++, one, one of the advantages of Vault is that every time you, you call a function, you're practically creating like a new instance of the, of the, of the function itself. So you don't need to, to add a lot of boilerplate to reuse like very small things. And let's make it more interesting. I have some code here, which I prepare. I'm just going to paste it. And let's play with it. So what I have is, is the same structure, a few oscillators, and I use another to make some variations, and then you can still start playing with it and changing parameters until you get something interesting at this point so this is this is basically some some of the things that that you can do with Vult. Uh, one thing that you may have noticed about the language is that uh, I, even, even though I, I try to make the, the language as simple as possible, uh, I, I, I wanted something that it was very strict and, and that gives you a lot of information about the errors that, that you are making. So uh, the language itself has, has a, a, a type system has type inference and also and, and it's type strict so you, if you type uh, a number one it's an integer 1.0 it's it's a it's a real number and if you want to add to add them up the language will not let let you because it's going to tell you no you, you, you need you need to be explicit what you want to do you want to add integers or do you want to add floats uh, usually like c++ automatically goes to the to the largest precision but sometimes it's not what you want. It's not what you want. So I, I wanted to be always explicit on, on the data that I was manipulating because all this code is going is going to run. It may run in a in, in a processor, and by making a mistake, you are changing all the all the the numeric computations that you have. And the other important thing is is the concept of of the implicit context. So as I mentioned before, it. Every time you declare like a small function, you can have memory inside, and every time you call it, it automatically creates instances. If, if you if you would like to replicate something like this in C++, you will have to first dec declare a, cl a class. Once and uh, once you have a class, then you declare members of the class, uh, access access to the members, and then your processing function. And every time you you want to call the function, you need to manually create the instance. But here it's just every time you you call it, it, it just gets created for you. So at this point, you have seen you have seen a little bit of the language, and you have heard some of the noise that I can make with it. And that's this is the question that you may have in your head. So uh, the the main reason why I, why I started developing developing Bolt is because I, I I like to make sounds. I like audio, and and when you are, when you are making audio, you have one of. <laughs> 
um, maybe de depending on, on the type of person that you are, but I, I like to try everything. So I, I use a lot of tools, and, and sometimes you make something very cool in one tool, uh, but, but you cannot port it to another tool. You have problems of, of incompatibility of the formats, or you may also have uh, licensing limitations. If I have a commercial program and I want to, to share something, let's say, with my brother that also likes music, he needs to have the licenses. And, and, and if you do hardware, when, it, when I start combining hardware, uh, to, to replicate a sound that I have created, part of part in a computer, part in a, in a hardware synthesizer, I have to, to do like a lot of uh, a lot of wiring, and then I want to do something else, and then I have to disconnect everything and then plug back. So what I wanted to do with Vult it was like all these sounds, all all these uh, all these uh, algorithms that I was developing. I want to capture it in a, in a in a single representation, like does it say I want to capture the essence of the of the algorithm, and then have have the freedom of running it wherever I want, which it could be a web browser, my music software, some other experimental platforms as Pure Data or Max. Uh, I have some programmable synthesizers, so I want to run the code there, or I want to make my own hardware as well and and and, and run it. So, I, uh, but but I don't want to rewrite every time the the code for for the for the target application. So the, the, the compiler itself is it's a, it's an, a small executable, just takes input, input uh, Vult code, and you can say, and you can specify to generate either C++, JavaScript, or, or Lua, target for Lua JIT. And the JavaScript version is the one that is running in the browser, so the, the compiler itself is, is, is very small. And it, and it can run in the in the browser. So every time I, I open it, you actually have the whole browser, the whole compiler, sorry, and and you can use it. And in order in order to get the good performance, uh, I also added some some more features to the to the compiler. For example, the capacity of not of uh, running the code with fixed point. If you, if you if Usually, in, in, a, in a large processor, like, like in a computer, you have floating points, and, and they have modules spe specific to running uh, complex floating point computations. But if you want to run it in a, in a very small microprocessor, like an Arduino, and you put floating point there, it's, it's going to be super slow. But you can, with Vult, you can use fixed point, which is a, a way of representing everything with integers, and, and you don't have to care about it. You just type 1.0, and Vult is going to generate the, the appropriate uh, integer computation that represents the same thing, and it's going to run much, much faster. And, and part of the things that I've been developing is, for example, uh, creating a, a templating system around it. So once you have the core code, you can put an, another template, and then you can ex export it or, or easily uh, compile it. And one of the, of the templates that I have is, is pure, pure Data. I don't know if you have heard about Pure Data. It's, it's a really nice open source platform which allows you to, to, uh, to, to do graphical programming. But, but you can also combine it with, with audio. And I also have templates for generating audio for, for the Tinsy board, which is an Arduino-like board, which has a very nice ARM processor and runs the, the boot code perfectly. So I'm going to give you a little more, one more example of the things that I've been doing with, with Vult and, and Pure Data. Let's open this one. Uh, so this is Pure Data, and I have created with Vult this, this object using the templating system, which is a, it's a drum synthesizer, which I, I took the model from a, from a paper that, that, that I found. Some guys trying to replicate the, like the famous techno, techno kick, and I, I just code everything in Vult, is a few hundred lines of code, and, and let's try to hear it. So, and that's, that's the sound, and you have different parameters, and you can just change the parameters, and you can play with it. Let's add some, some noise, change the noise type. You want to get more stream? You, 
a very good application for this kind of things. If, if you have rats in your building, you just crank, crank this one up to the maximum and you definitely will scare them. It's also very good uh, to get complaints from, from your neighbors. <laughs> and this is uh, like the module of, of, a, of a drum. I have other models as well, for example, uh, I wanted to make a, a larger synthesizer. Let's run this one. So I have a, a lo bunch of uh, oscillators that were coded the same way as, as I did before. And then I can have filters and I can start playing with, with the sound here. Very interesting for me that we have a lot, a lot of papers about uh, game music. So I wanted to make something that makes sound very familiar for you. Does, does anyone recognize that? It's, it's like an 8-bit sound <laughs> that was typical in the games. So you can do with this. Is, it's kind of flexible. You can do a lot of a lot of stuff with it. And let's. And as I mentioned before, all, all this code that you write in Bolt can be exported to to run in in very small devices. So I, I have this is a picture of one prototype that I was making with this uh, the Tinsy board, and I was trying to to create a, a Eurohack module, which is Eurohack is it's a kind of a standard uh, that synthesizers man manufacturers uh, do or create is just like the size and, and they have uh, voltage values and specifications. And if you follow those, those, those recommendations, then you can plug it with, with, with other hardware. So I put some algorithms written in Bolt here. This is the, the microprocessor and just hand wired and soldering this thing. And this is, this is in combination with, my, with, my, with the other models that I have. And if you like hardware, this is this is great. You have wires that you can plug everywhere. So I have like a few drum modules. This is my the module that I was developing. And one one of the things that I that I like a lot about this 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 format is that uh, compared compared to pure data, in pure data you have to move everything with the mouse, but here you have plenty of knobs and then you can just start moving all of them and then you find something interesting and decide record it and make a song. Yeah, and this is another example that, that I got I, you see in the PD Party, which is a, an application that lets you run pure data patches on, on, on an iPad. I generate the boot code and link it with the application and it's, it's the same the same code of the of the synthesizer that I showed you before, but just in a running directly on, on the iPad. I have some noise there, I have envelopes. One of the, that's one of the things that I'm trying, I'm trying to run all this code in every place I can and trying to find new applications for it. Okay, so how did you get the code? Of course, it's open fest, so everything is open here. You can get it from GitHub, and you can install it even directly from, from NPM. Uh, well, before we go to the questions, I wanted to, to show you something that, I, that I've been working on. I want, since it, this is a, a a music hall. I wanted to make some music, so I'm now I'm gonna use the, what I have here is is uh, it's the the drum sounds that I showed you before. I have them here. Then I have two synthesizers. Can you 
increase the, the volume a little bit? Perfect. One synthesizer here, another synthesizer here. And I'm, I'm just going to play you a song and, and I'm going to do all the manipulation directly from here so you can have an idea of, of what, what I'm doing. So let's start. speed a little bit get something
because I can stay the whole day and just play in there. <laughs> so, any questions? No questions? Sorry? Have you had any live performance uh, using Vogue? Not yet. This is practically the first live performance that I, that I prepared. <laughs> Uh, another, another question is, uh, have you, uh, sorry I missed the start, but have you used uh, live audio input? Yes, it's, it's possible, but in this case I, I didn't prepare anything. But yes, you, you can just so take any, any... Add uh, effects on, it, on top of it. Yes, add yeah. in effects. Uh, okay, yeah. thank you. Any other questions? Okay, in that case, let's give a big round of applause for Leo.